Well, hello everyone and thank you very much for coming today. My name is Mary Brainy and I'm a consultant working on the building program for the Simon Fairfield Public Library. And a building program is a letter to an architect. It's more than one page, so it's a kind of a, you know, it's a fat online doc and a fat notebook probably um, that talks about all the different things that go into the library that's going to serve Douglas very well for at least 30 years. And so part of getting this together is doing math, you know, measuring, figuring out how many seats we need and how many, you know, multiplying that by the factor that says how many square feet you need for seats, how many books you need, doing the same thing, and we have some, we have some guidelines to help us out. But the most important thing is finding out what you folks who use the library and with the folks who um, work here in the library really want to see. So this is a brainstorming exercise and I know that you all have done brainstorming in school and so you know the, you know the drill. All the ideas, just say whatever you think, all the ideas are good, all the, um, there are no bad ideas. We are respectful of everybody as they say their ideas, and certainly you can build on other people's ideas. So with that being said, we're going to use a little um, metric that um, will, there are going to be five different categories as we go along. And the first category we're going to talk about is the strengths. So the strengths of the library, what do you see, whoops, one of the strengths is not how my, my, uh, Paper is attached to you, that's for sure. There we go. What, what are the strengths? What are the best things about this library? What are the things you love about it? Sophia? The books in general. I started out with the red pen, but it was kind of weak, so I switched. What else? What are some of the other things that you see as wonderful? Great things to come to the library for. The movies. Oh yeah, and I use cursive because when I was in first grade, we were told that printing was not allowed, and we were taught cursive in first grade, and we got our knuckles wrapped. Marcus said the history books. History books, what else? What else? Mm -hmm. um, particularly when the kids are younger, I really love that there's toys out for young kids when you come here. We're outgrowing that a little bit, but. Think about the whole, whoops, this is going to be uh, an interesting day, I think. The rain has us all just come on, really. I don't think you can blame the rain for that. <laughs> I think, you know, it's probably making the, affecting the integrity of the notepad. It's the ghost, it's the, is there a ghost? Do you have a ghost? No, no, no ghosts. <laughs> no ghosts, kiddos, it's fine. Oh, okay. It's fine. Well, so it actually was, I tripped over it. I like spaces like this too because I work from home so it's nice sometimes to be able to come in here and have a place where I can just set up my laptop and work and have access to the printers and stuff. What else? Marcus says he likes like the programs, the children's programs like Lego Club. I like the atmosphere of this library. Like there's some libraries that are kind of like dark and feels like it's not okay to talk. <laughs> so I I do like that this library, like especially this level, has a lot of the natural light and everything. 
I was going to say, like, the small town feel. You know, you walk in, they're like, oh, here's your book on hold, or this came in, you know, you liked the other one. Yeah, I know it's not part of the building, but I do feel like the librarians make a big difference here. But I'm sorry. I know it's not part of the physical building, yeah. but I feel like the librarians make a big difference. Like you said, like the making recommendations and stuff. like a place that's safe so like if we're on the way home we have something we need to do mom can just send me in here and I'll pick up the books on the whole shelf. So we can do this. I'll put this over here and we can add to it if you think of anything else so we can move on to the next. But going once, going twice. So the next thing we're going to think about while I'm taping this up, you can think, is challenges. What are the things about this building? that are very challenging for you when you use it, um, etc. So just think about that for one minute while I get this masking tape. It won't hurt the wood, right, Justin? Hmm? Masking tape. Oh, no, no, no. That's good. So that you can see. So what are some of the things that you might see as challenges to using this building? Stuff that's not quite perfect. Marcus pointed out the need for a wheelchair ramp, and I would add for parents with young kids and strollers, like I used to carry the stroller up the front steps, so I think it's not just handicap access, I feel like there are families with young children and particularly strollers also would need a similar level of accommodation. Um. Now it's really tricky to wrangle kids, strollers, books, and <laughs> what are some of the other things? Well it's a little small, it doesn't have as many books as like some of the other huge libraries have been to. So what are some of the other huge libraries you've been to? Um, there's one that we passed by a lot, I can't really think of the name. Oh. Is it in Massachusetts or Rhode Island? Or do you know? Uh, I don't really know. We've, my sister goes to speech, so we pass by it a lot. Uh, okay. Um, well, if you think of it, that's fine. Yeah. Huh? Was it Webster? I don't think so. I almost want to say Millbury, but I'm pretty sure that's not right. I'm sorry? I almost want to say Millbury, but I'm pretty sure that's not Oh, not Millbury right. could be. I mean, Millbury's a fair size. Library. They have a good size library. There's, yep, they do. This is only, their addition renovation isn't too old. A few years. So it could very well be. So what are some of the other things? You know, and think of it as things that you'd like to make better if you could. Yeah, the tight aisle spaces, especially in, is that the adult fiction room? Mm -hmm. um. That's another ADA compliance issue, so they're going to have to move. Yeah, I feel like that alone <laughs> will solve things for a lot of, like, not, I, not just handicapped people. 
mm -hmm. would benefit from those accommodations. Um, right. um, what else? Oh, we were talking about not as many books. We've also run into like, it'd be nice to have like large print um, kid books or dyslexia from the font, things like that that you don't necessarily have in a smaller library. So some of that also comes in um, with ABA as well. I mean, because it can also provide, you know, the big um, the readers and things like that that they so important as well. It's, it's, that, that goes two, two chunks to that as well. What else? I would say just in general, more space for different things. Like, I think there's a lot of great things the library could provide, but it'd be a question of where would you even put things? Um, or even spaces for like different like local clubs to meet or whatever. Maybe like a brighter space for the children's programs. Like I know Bellingham Library, it's like a big bright room for the children's yes. programming. Yeah. I think they have a separate room and they have a like a much bigger children's section. Um, well, we went to Wyndham Library up in New Hampshire once. That was huge and I mean, probably not realistic for our <laughs> town, but <laughs> we were like, wow. <laughs> we ought to be able to do better than a half inch best. <laughs> The program room itself is nice. It's the process of getting to it, and then you know yeah. walking past the furnace room and all the dev story time stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it still feels like you're underground too. It, it's also a really small room. Yeah. For what we use it mm. for. And you've had to cover up a lot of that beautiful mural on the back wall because mm -hmm. you need more space for the books. Yep. Um, And even with that, I feel like a lot of the books are stored down there. So you, unless you ask, you don't know that they're at the library. It, it comes back to space. We yeah. We ran out of space up here, but we've got books that still move frequently. So we got to cram them somewhere. Yeah. What up? The loft is pretty small, and it only can hold one person, so I think it would be kind of cool if we could make that and be like a little bit bigger, and like multiple people could hang out and read in there. Any other things? Any other? The other thing probably is the poetic today. More direct access from the parking lot um, instead of having to walk up and around the building. There's a back door, but that leads you into the like the club story time area. Yeah. So you have to walk all the way up the stairs. And I don't think you can just get in there or see there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes come out when I finish book club, but you're right. Yeah, I'm just thinking like if you come and it's wet out or you have mobility That's challenges. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having to swim up the driveway <laughs> in the front walk. But it's still nice to have that because that parking lot wasn't there before. Yeah. Like, not that long ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's good to have the parking lot. Yeah. Will that microphone. flood, that <laughs> will water come in and flood on a day like this down there or not? Yeah, we oh, haven't had any issues with oh, that. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. So, can you think of any other challenges that you want me to hang this up and go on to the next? Any other things that you want, you'd like, you say, boy, I wish this was something different? Maybe the big thing is we always want more space. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is 
Oh, okay. Wait, Mark just has one more. Oh, one more. Uh, he was thinking a, a better way to communicate well, all the different like book clubs and offerings that the library has. You should probably also be better at looking up on the site. Mm -hmm. We are actually about to start moving all of our book club books and book club flyers to this shelf. So it's the first thing people see whenever they come in is a flyer for the book clubs and then all the books next to it. So you can just grab one huh? instead of having to go to the search desk and ask the gale for it. Nice. So maybe that will garner attention <laughs> and communicate that we do in fact have book clubs better than we do now. There okay, are so the next thing I'm going to ask you about is opportunities. Now that we're going to talk about doing potentially renovating the building, adding on to it, creating a new space somewhere else, all these possibilities which we won't know until we get this whole building program done and we find out what fits and so on. What are some of the opportunities that we create when, that are created now? When you see what's good about it, when you see what the struggles are, what are some good things you think can happen? get a chance to do what? Opportunities or chances to, to do some, make some changes. I think the biggest thing is really if there were more like meeting spaces and stuff, there'd be more opportunity to bring the community together with different types of clubs. Like I know there are some, um, not local towns, but some places where community spaces like the library are really used to help people with common interests find each other. And I think that's somewhat limited when you don't have a lot of space. Like, you couldn't have multiple clubs meeting um, unless you have the rooms for them. What else? Market says more defined sections, so it's easier to find books. Yeah, that might be helpful, like a sign. Fiction, non-fiction, mystery. And not moving them around so much. I feel like the effort to try to organize them, then I come up like, it was here, and now it's it's somewhere else. <laughs> Sophia, did you have something? Maybe there could be like a few board games, so like you and a friend could come here and play a board game and maybe take it out and bring it back home. I love board games. We love board games too. <laughs> we have a ton at our house. Um, I do love board games. See, this would be perfect. <laughs> um, I think it'd be nice too um, for families, particularly with young children, like a toy lending library. I feel like so often kids are excited to play with a new toy, but then they lose interest kind of quickly. So having some some way way to borrow new toys and then sort of let them drift back in. We have anything? Nope. Nope? Nothing? He said he doesn't want to build a new library because he likes it here. <laughs> and he doesn't want them to shut it down because then he can't get books. <laughs> Well, no one I'll tell you what. Down the <laughs> Nobody, exactly. Absolutely. We are not Dudley. <laughs> no, 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 no. When I was a kid, Bellingham had a really nice old library, and I was also sad when they closed it. But their new library is awesome. And I got in a black too. So. That's right. And um, I went the library I went to when I was where I got my library card when I was six was a storefront in Worcester, a little tiny storefront in Worcester. Um, that eventually closed because it was too small. Um, they also had a beautiful, beautiful um, old building like this for the original for the original library, and somebody decided um, they wanted something modern, so they tore down this gorgeous old library and built what is there now. And I shall 
I mean, inside it's very functional. Outside, hmm. So, you know, we're not going to, this is part of the figuring out, Liam, what, what's the best thing that's going to work for the town, you know. And so if we, if you want to help, if you can help us out by saying some of the things, you know, what would you, now you have the opportunity to make some things better. What are some of the things you'd like to have made better? Mm. Okay. I wonder if we should add the, I don't know, historic character of the building to the list of strengths. Yeah, sounds good. So are there, so what do you think about um, like access to computers here? I know that some people prefer that this not be sort of a low tech zone, but on the other hand, there's a time that tech is essential, you know? So do you, what do you think about technology? Should any technology be? Is it a time to add more technology? Yeah. Yeah? What, what would you like to see for technology? More computers, like, like find books on because, like, like if there's one person researching one and somebody else wants a research, then like they can't. So they're not. Yeah. What else? The survey mentioned a maker space with different options, like a 3D printer or video editing equipment. And I think that'd be really nice, um, just because it gives you an opportunity to sort of work with those tools if you can't afford them or before you decide to buy them. Chip in, to chip in, Luke. I want to hear what you have to say. He'll let me know. What about there's more books here? So you don't have to wait for them to come in. I'll say that one. I think if we had more space, having more books here, so we don't have to wait for them to come in from other libraries would be nice. Yeah, that would definitely be a perk. <laughs> stuff here that you can take out. There's also a lot of stuff that you have to wait for and yeah. it can take a while. Yeah, I find we, we come in and get a lot here and then we order a lot of books. Um, I think that you should like double or some books because like when you're one person checking it out, like, you don't know how long it's going to be out and then like, when you come back, like, then you, it's not there. You want to get three doubles. Like the, maybe the double or Right. More copies so that. Maybe some video games for like a Nintendo Switch because I may be purchasing one and the libraries are all about like tech or whatever. It would be nice. Because I believe they're pretty popular. I'll 
Mark has said for books that like there might only be one at a different library in the state, it'd be nice if there was like some way to coordinate and you know, our library could get a copy of that. So I guess more copies, but not just within the library, but looking across, across the state, across the, I guess, the CMR system. That is logical because it's frustrating to have to place a whole line something and like wait like however many weeks. Yeah, there's one book we know of where there's only one in the state. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh my god. But even when there are so many, many even when there are many copies, you still have to. I placed a whole. I placed a whole two days ago, and it said 12 weeks. You're right. What else? Maybe like a small CD player, because if you're using like Libby or something and you like audiobooks, which I do, it can be frustrating because like some of the popular ones have to wait for a while. So, and there are some CDs here, but we don't really have anything to play them on except my mom's car, and the truck doesn't have any CD players. Mm -hmm. so. So you said CD player or audiobook player? Yeah. I can see that if you have more than one person who wants to listen to them in the car. <laughs> I know. I finished a book three weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for the sequel. It's been incredible. You just want to go right through them. What else? put this up and as we add we can add to it if we want and then now we're going to do the fun stuff Oops. I'm sorry Liam I don't think you're going to like this but we're going to do it anyway so if say a tornado or a bad hurricane some storm came and took the library up made the library it's gone. here you know you could see the <laughs> you can see the yellow the, the red and white stripes and the ruby slippers the wicked witch of the west flying away into the cloud taking the library with it and you could start from scratch what would be your tell me about your perfect library if you could just start from scratch what would you put in it where would it be what would it look like <laughs> so it would be we do this you want to say that Marcus is along the same lines. He'd like it to still have kind of an old-fashioned look to it with like mosaics and stuff. So what are some of the old-fashioned things? Uh, you said mosaics? Yeah, like the things that we have in the top now, kind of. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, okay. You mean like in the top outside? <laughs> I think we need the, do you mean like the carved outside? Yeah. Okay. And the copper stuff on the roof. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So the we call those architectural elements that cover it. I personally like libraries that are more like one level. Um, I feel like they tend to have natural light across the whole library, and it's easier to navigate them. As much as I love a good loft, <laughs> but I think having most of the library being on one floor is convenient. Sophia? I think if I had my dream library, it would be nice and big, multiple floors, lots of books, maybe like a reading room, but still some, yeah, some like Greek columns at the front. That would just give it like a fancy air. I would like it to still be a little bit oldie. 
long as I'm working here, I don't think you have to worry about it. <laughs> yes, it'd be really cool. Oh, well, if the tornado swept it away, it'd be gone. But if we were looking at a new building, it'd be really cool to see how they could repurpose pieces of this one so that it wasn't completely Yeah, that would lost. be really, really cool. Like, take the valuables out before you smash it down or whatever. <laughs> Libraries do, I mean, depending on the situations and things like this, do, do things like that. Um, I feel like, 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 when I make them with eight books and then okay, I'm not going to the library, it should be bigger. There should be, like, like, spaces, like, like, that you can, like, rent out, like, a little, like, 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 I don't know what to call it, but, like, like a hut, not like a hot hut, but, like, a little place where you could just have peace and quiet and like, read. Like reading nooks? Yeah. And small study rooms and things like that? Yeah. So more like separate spaces? Yeah. What are those called in England? Are they reading corrals or something like that? Reading corrals? That's a little tiny room for them. <laughs> What? Those, I thought those older libraries had like little reading corrals, like where maybe it's more of a college library thing where you have like a little cubicle. Study, oh, yeah, study right, right. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm probably not saying it right because I've only read about them. I think carols. We can study carols. Yeah. Carols, yeah. Like what were you saying to you? Oh. Yeah. Marcus was thinking he'd love to have like a wall where it was just like a world map. Oh yeah, that would be really, really good. What about World map wall. wall. Cumberland Library has that rotating collection space when you walk in, where local people put different collections. Do you remember Cumberland Library? Yeah. So like display cases where you might have different collections of things. Yeah. Well, Boston Museum of Science has one that's very similar to the one they have in the Oh, I feel like like there should be multiple floors, but like the DVDs and then like the like the fiction books and then the non-fiction books and like the history books and there should be an elevator that takes you up. <laughs> so put the books in AV on second floor and have an elevator. Have you been to the Cumberland Library, the old monastery? I think he would like it. <laughs> it's both historic and huge. So the right, somebody was talking about that the other day. The Cumberland that was at an old abbey. Yeah, 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 something. So when the Trappists moved out of that abbey, they moved to the abbey that exists in my town of Spencer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Where you get the jam. <laughs> the Trappist preserves. Anything else? I do think, um, like collections of things would be really cool because I recently read a book that was set in, in the New York Public Library and it had like collections of really old things. That would be so cool. Marcus seconds that one. He was saying like town artifacts and stuff. That'd be very cool. Okay. from local artists and stuff like you know instead of just painted walls having artwork from local artists I think would be really nice like only to keep more character in the library great artwork so in our library in Spencer when we did this um, We did our addition renovation almost 30 years ago. And um, at that time, uh, a book illustrator named Gary Lippincott, who was living in Spencer, you may have 
seen some of his work. He's done some amazing things. And um, he painted on our in our foyer outside between the children's room and the little program space that we have. Um, Mother Goose, and he his model was the children's librarian at the time, Aww. and it's still there. And that part of the other part that came from in our old basement, which was the children's room, um, there had been a mural, and then that's still there as well because we told them they had to preserve it. That he had done with a couple of other local artists, and so his. Um, a lot of his illustrations use local people. So um, you, know, you can go through some of his books and we can say, well, this is this person and that's that person. But to have it there, it is really, really special. Yeah. And the other thing that we have is a quilt that um, some of the ladies, it was a quilting group, and they made a special quilt for the new addition to the building, and that's hanging up. So yeah, that, those are great things. Anybody else? All right, we're almost done. One more, although we can always add to whatever we have. This one's tricky for grown ups, but I suspect <laughs> it's not going to be so tricky for you guys you had all the money in the world to spend. If you didn't have to think for a second, so we call it if money or no object, if you, you know, if you just, it's like going to your parents and saying, oh yeah, I want um, an intent, can you just buy me that Nintendo thing? Because Mine's kind of old and a new one. The one I got last year, a new one just came out, you know, or, you know, so I want the latest Switch. I want, oh wait, can I have that iPhone that costs $1,400 and, you know, all those kinds of things. So, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? With the library. Hmm? With the library. With the library. <laughs> let's, let's <laughs> With the library, yeah. What would you do with the library if you had all the money in the world? I'd buy a, a hotel movie theater and bring all the kids to it. So you put in a real movie theater. All right. What else? A whole room devoted to history. A bigger room. Because you can get a whole, I mean, you could get a room like this, this size devoted to history. He thinks this size would be Oh, okay. All right. So a reasonable size. Not ginormous. All right. What else? Um, I have a gaming room with like PS5s and like Xboxes. You know what I would actually like that? Because then I feel like gaming could be like a library activity, limited. <laughs> We're on five now. I still feel like my PS3 is new. <laughs> um, what is PS5 and what was the other thing you said? Xbox. Xbox. Uh, what else would you like to see? A uh, room where you can just curl up and read. I guess if we're saying money is no object. Yeah. There's so many things you could do with technology to like have like interactive bulletin boards and stuff where you could like check if a book's in there, get recommendations based on your books. Like I think um, there's just a lot of technology available that I think would make it really easy for people to come into the library and interact digitally with the collection to find what they want. No object. What would you what would you buy for the library? 
Any more ideas? Any more ideas? Can you think of anything else? Um, I'm gonna go karting track. Hey, okay, what track? Go karting track. Go karting track. Go karting track. You got it. Inside. inside or outside? Inside or outside? Oh, uh, inside. I mean, if you get a no new object, a whole outside playground would be kind of nice. <laughs> like, day that. Yeah. It could be part of it. I mean, it could be around the outer edge of the playground. <laughs> sure, you could have it go inside and outside. Sure. I mean, really. <laughs> so, if you want to go out there, like half of the track's inside and need the go down and jump. Sure. Out, out of the window and land on the track. Oh. Absolutely. Easy peasy if you can afford it. What else? You could have like a whole section with books on pets, like books about learning about animals and like things you can do for your pet to enrich their life. Because I recently bought a bunny on November 3rd. She is so cute, and I love looking for ways to make her life more fun. Yeah. Is she a sounds rabbit? great. A very yeah. large pet section. I used to have those. Yeah. There should be like a whole like school like rolling place. She just like rolling about like the books. Like resources for homeschoolers would be nice. I know there are some, but I guess with more space, you could have a lot more. Yeah, like stuff for kids, like a book that they help with math, because my math is kind of hard right now. I don't really like area and perimeter stuff. Oh, I feel like we have books we can recommend. We do a lot of math through reading, okay. like so storybooks <laughs> do that. But I feel like I have a magic tool that helps with area and perimeter. So, um, so more um, school support books. Oh, okay. And what else? like a whole how-to section so like if you're trying to learn a new video game or learn how to do video editing or any any new game skills that sort of thing having a lot of how-to books yeah maybe like um an area where you could like learn to code your own games too because that would be really interesting yeah yeah so maybe like, like local people could even volunteer like, like you would have coding books and volunteers to help or some sort of this. computer lab is that what you mean yeah, something like that. Yes. Anything else? I think even just more of the the different children's programs and stuff. Um, I know there's a lot of different ones, and the library already does a lot, but I think. I don't know. If money was no object, I feel like there's probably others available. If money was not real, where would you be amazing? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. okay, well, I'll give you one more minute to think about all these. If there's anything you want to add, we'll just think, take one minute. And then, if not, I will say thank you very much. And it was delightful. I'm so glad you all came. And good luck. I think the rain's let up for the moment. Rock <laughs> and I know. But thank you. This is you. You folks came up with some things. This is the third one we've done. And you have come up with some things that we haven't heard anywhere else before, as I knew that you would. Thank you.